because we feel it the other way around. I am a little lonely thing exploring all this universe and trying to get make something out of it, get something out of it, do something with it. And I know I'm going to fail because I know I'm going to die one day. So we're all fundamentally depressed. I think up all these fantasies about what's going to happen to us when we're dead and all that kind of thing. Uh, what's going to happen to you when you're dead? What do you mean, you? If you are basically the universe, that question is irrelevant. You never were born and you never will die. Because what there is, is you. And that should be absolutely obvious. But it is not obvious at all. That should be the simplest thing in the world. That you, the I, is what has always been going on and always will go on forever and ever. But we have been bamboozled by religionists, by politicians, by fathers and mothers, by all sorts of people to tell us you're not it. And we believed it. So, do you see now why, if I put it to you in this very negative way, you can't do anything to change yourselves, to become better, to become happier, to become more serene, to become mystics or anything. If I say you can't do a damn thing, can you understand this negative statement in a positive way? What I'm really saying is that you don't need to. Because if you see yourselves in the correct way, you are all as much extraordinary phenomena of nature as, say, trees, clouds, the patterns in running water, the shape of fire, the arrangement of the stars, the form of a galaxy. You are all just like that. nothing wrong with you at all. Except that I have to add this little flip. You, you, you have, in you, you do think there's something wrong with you. See? And there's no question, you do. We all object to ourselves in various ways. And I'm going to add, there's nothing wrong with that either. Because that's part of the flow. That's part of what is going on. That's part of what we do. So I don't, you see, I'm, 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 what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to deliver you from a sense of guilt. Because I'm going to teach you that you needn't feel guilty because you feel guilty. <laughs> of course you feel guilty. It's like someone put a match on you and you feel hot. So they taught you as a child to feel guilty and you feel guilty. They say, well, well, if somebody comes along and says, well, you shouldn't. It's not the point. I'm going to say, not that you shouldn't, but that you do, and don't worry about it. <laughs> and if you want to say further, but I can't help worrying about it, I'm going to say to you, okay, worry about it. <laughs> this is a principle called in Japanese judo, meaning the gentle way. Go along with it. Go along with it. Go along with it. So therefore, this is the beginning of meditation. You don't know what you're supposed to do. What can you do? But if you don't know what you're supposed to do, you watch. You simply watch what's going on. like, say, somebody plays music. You listen, and you just follow those sounds. 
and eventually you understand the point of the music. The point cannot be explained in words because music is not words. But after a while in listening to any music you will understand the point of it. And that point will be the music itself. So in exactly the same way you can listen to all experiences, because all experiences whatsoever are vibrations coming at you. Well, they, uh, you are these vibrations, as a matter of fact. If you could really feel out what is happening, what you are aware of as you and as everything else is all the same. It's a, 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 a vibrations of all kinds, and they're on different bands of the spectrum. Sight vibrations, emotion vibrations, uh, touch vibrations, sound vibrations, all these things adding together are woven. All the different senses are woven and you get a pattern in the weaving and that pattern is the picture of what you now feel. This thing is kind of thing. Now, Instead of saying, what should I do about it? Because who knows what to do about it? To know what to do about this, you would have to know everything. And if you don't, then the only thing that, at least to begin with, to begin with, you can do is watch. Watch what's going on. Watch not only what's going on on the outside, but also what's going on on the inside. Treat your own thoughts, your own reactions, your own emotions about what's going on outside as if those inside reactions were also outside things. That you're just watching. And follow, simply observe how they go. Note now, you may say, this is difficult. <coughs> I am bored by watching what is going on. Let's say you, you, you sit quite still and you are simply observing what is happening. All the sounds outside, all the different shapes and lights in front of your eyes, all the feelings on your skin, inside your skin, belly rumbles, thoughts going on inside your head, chatter, chatter, chatter. I ought to be writing a letter to so-and-so. I should have done this, this, but all of the bills going on. See, you just watch it. But then you say to yourself, but this is boring. <laughs> now, watch that too. What is it? What, what kind of a funny feeling is it that makes you say, but this is boring? <coughs> Where is it? Where do you feel it? I should be doing something else instead. What's that feeling? What part of your body is it in? Is it in here? Is it in here? Is it in the soles of your feet? Where is it? Boring. The feeling of boredom can be very interesting if you try to look it up. So you simply watch at everything going on without attempting to change it in any way, without judging it, without calling it good or bad, you watch it. And that is the essential process of meditation. know what reality is, but we can't describe it. Just as we all know how to beat our hearts and shape our bones, but cannot say how it is done. 